Welcome. Recently I've been doing a series of videos on Software Defined Radio or SDR. I'll put a link in the description to my SDR playlist if you want to check out those videos. I'm using the RTL SDR V3 dongle and I'll put a link in the description to that on Amazon and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video I'm going to be compiling Dump 1090 for a Mac. So Dump 1090 is used to track aircraft and I have a Wikipedia page up here for the ADSB. So this is technology where planes transmit uh, who they are, where they're at, things like that. And then other aircraft or the air traffic control can take in that information. And I do want to say I'm not an expert at SDR or aircraft or any of this stuff. So if I say anything wrong, go ahead and correct me below. Okay, so I'll insert a clip of the antenna configuration I'm using. It's not the absolute best antenna configuration. It's just the one that came with my kit. You can make your own that are way better. Okay, so this is what I'm using for the antenna setup. So I have the smaller leads screwed in here, and I have one pointing up, one pointing down, and if you pop off this center cap, maybe hard to see in here, but I have the outside or the shielded part of the cable connected to the bottom, and the middle part is connected to the top. I mean, this is how it came, I'm just showing you how it came. The middle part is to the top. So what I did, it's probably hard to see on the video, but I used a little permanent marker here to make this black. I tried to write um, C on there for conductor, but it's kind of wearing off. So I'm just going to keep this one black. I'll probably remarker it later so I know what orientation it needs to be. So I'll probably actually use a suction cup to stick this to a window, or if I'm outside, I'll just set this on whatever surface in this orientation with this up and this down. Okay, back to the video. So the variant of Dump 1090 I'm going to be using is Malcolm Rob, And there are a couple different ones. There's uh, Anti-Res, there is the uh, Flight Aware, and I got Anti-Res working. It didn't work so great. Uh, Flight Aware I got running, but it doesn't have like a map you can display. So this one worked the best, but I did have a lot of uh, trouble getting it running. So hopefully this video will help other people that were having the same trouble I had. So I have put together a set of instructions and I'll put a link in the description to this on my website so you can check it out, and I'll be following those along in this video. And if you find anything wrong here or anything that could be optimized, um, leave a comment and I can update this page later. So I'll open up a terminal, and there's a prerequisite of this to install Mac ports, and I'll put a link below to a video I did on installing Mac ports. And I know this runs on Mac OS Catalina, but it may run on older versions like Mojave and even ones older than that, I'm not really sure. So on my website, I have a little note here that says I've included error messages at the bottom of the page. So this is if you've uh, been having trouble in search on YouTube, hopefully you'll find my website due to that. And then the first step here says move to desktop. So I'll type CD desktop. And then you need to download the dump 1090 repository. So there's this git statement. I'll copy and paste that to my terminal. That will download on my desktop. And then I'll move into the dump 1090 directory. Okay, I'll clear my screen. And then you want to install these prerequisite packages. So I'll copy those, paste that in. It'll ask me for my password. Okay, now it's going to install those packages. I'll hit yes here. So yours may take a little bit longer. I've already installed this. I tried to uninstall it, but it's kind of a pain to do. So uh, that should install fairly easily. Now we need to fix one of the problems that was keeping this from compiling. So if I went in here and just hit make, it starts compiling it, but we get this error. So if you ever want to undo, you can type make space clean. And I'll clear my screen here. And that will clear out anything so you can start over. So there's this librtlsdr.pc. I'll copy this command into my terminal. This will open up the nano editor. And you see this prefix, exec prefix, libdir and include dir are empty. So I'll copy these lines here. I'll go up to these lines and I'll just hit control K on these and that will delete the whole line and then I'll paste in the correct lines. Okay, I'll try control O to save, control X to exit. And now we can compile it. So I'll type make. Okay, if I type LS here. We'll see the dump 1090 right here. And then there's view 1090 here. Those are the two binaries it created. So we can copy those into opt local bin. So you could just use them right here, like that. But I'll copy them into a, an executable directory. There we go. And now I can type dump 1090. I can type dash dash net space dash dash interactive. 
I'll hit enter. Okay, now we're tracking flights. So this works better if you do it outside, but my antenna is, it's stuck to a window right now. Okay, so now I'll open up a web browser. I'll go to localhost colon 8080. And here we get a Google map. It says for development purposes only, because there's no API key on here, but we can still kind of use it. So I can click on the airplane here. You can see which airplane it is. I can click on flight aware. It will tell us about this flight. So it started in Waterloo, Iowa, and it's going to Council Bluffs. Sometimes there'll be pictures of planes on some of these, depending on which service you use. It has FR-24, oops, let me try a different one. There we go, it has FR-24, flight stats, and flight aware. So I'm showing you how to do this on a Mac. I will not say this is the best implementation of this technology. It's okay, I mean, it kind of works, but um, using Pi Aware on a Raspberry Pi is really nice, and I'll be doing a video on that in the future. And there's some other software for Windows that works too, but to get this running on a Mac, this is a solution I found. So in the upper right here, you'll see settings. It says the settings feature is coming soon. Keep checking GitHub. So I don't know how long that message has been there. It might have been here two weeks or eight years. So um, if you want more features, you could always develop them yourself. So you can scroll in and out of this map also. I can see the airport somewhere around here. Right here, this is the airport in my area. So planes will be flying in and out of there. And some will be flying across too. So you'll see flights going from say New York to LA or something like that because we're flyover country, that's what we do. On the right side here, you'll see the little table of flights. I'll zoom out a little bit. And I've gotten flights 100 miles away when I've had this outside. And you can see the trail here. If I click on another plane, you can see the trail. This one doesn't seem to allow you to show trails on all the planes at the same time, like some do. But it's kind of fun to play around with. And I have this hooked up to my MacBook, so in theory I could go outside and do this and pick up more airplanes. And I could put the antenna higher in the air and get even more airplanes. So it's pretty cool. I haven't tried this without internet access. Actually, let me do that right now. Okay, so I've turned off my Wi-Fi. I'll click on an airplane. Now, like flight aware shouldn't work. Okay. I'll zoom out on this map and see what it looks like. Okay, so it's not expanding the map because I don't have that in my cache, but the part of the map that is in the cache seems to be working still. So hopefully this doesn't refresh and make that go away. So if you wanted to take this remotely, you could in theory open this up, it'll cache that map, and then you could go to say like a mountain or hill in your area and then track planes there without having it on internet. So that's all for this video. Hopefully people are able to find this helpful because I was looking online trying to figure out how to compile this. I found lots of forums where people had got partway there, but they couldn't get over that hump to uh, get the whole thing installed because it kept running into errors. So I hunted down the errors and I'm not a C developer, so it was a little bit of a challenge for me, but I got it figured out and I wanted to share that with everyone else. So if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.